Welcome everyone, I'm Steve Stewart. Thanks for joining me as I visit the cemeteries, graves, memorials, and final resting places of the famous people who have touched our lives. They may be gone, but they're not forgotten. Hi friends, well the sun finally came out, but so did the wind. It's a little breezy here, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me. I may have to go stand behind a tree or something, but uh, I'm here in front of the final resting place of Frank L. Baum, the author of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And um, the other day I heard that uh, the last known remaining cast or crew from The Wizard of Oz passed away. Jerry Marin was 98 years old. He was uh, one of the munchkins and he was the last remaining cast member at least known cast member from the Wizard of Oz. Now I visited um, L. Frank Baum's grave here a few years ago and I just took a picture. I didn't do a video tour. So I thought that I would come back and visit his uh, gravesite again and also visit the gravesites of um, all of the uh, cast members that I could find from the Wizard of Oz. The Great Mausoleum, that's where some of the biggest names in Hollywood are laid to rest. Michael Jackson is right up there. And, uh, even Michael Jackson, if you remember, he was in the black version of The Wizard of Oz called The Wiz with uh, Diana Ross. He played the scarecrow. And so even uh, Michael Jackson has a connection to The Wizard of Oz. Not the original Wizard of Oz, but uh, uh, the remake. Actress Clara Blandick, who played Auntie M, is interred in the Great Mausoleum in the Columbarium of Security. Actor Charlie Grapewin played Uncle Henry, and he's also interred at the Great Mausoleum, not far away in the Columbarium of Inspiration. The problem is, if you like to visit the final resting places of your favorite stars in Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California, the doors to the Great Mausoleum are now locked and the public is only allowed into the chapel. You're not allowed to take photos or videos, and they have guards who monitor it very closely. So as far as I know, there's no way to visit any of the crypts inside the Gray Mausoleum, other than the few that you can see when you're inside the chapel. Now I've been looking for some of the other um, people that are buried here. There's at least uh, uh, two or three or four others, but I believe they're also in private areas or I just haven't been able to find them. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, a, give you a tour of the cast and crew I have been able to find over the last couple of years. And I'm gonna start in Hollywood, California at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. My first stop is going to be the final resting place of the legendary Judy Garland. She, of course, played Dorothy, the lead character in The Wizard of Oz. And four of her Wizard of Oz alumni are also interred here, or at least memorialized here. If you plan to visit yourself, just drive through the front gates and go straight back to the second street and make a right. Then just go straight to the end of the street until you see the, the mausoleum. Then make a left and you'll see Judy Garland's pavilion on your right hand side. It's the very first door. It's a newer section and her body was just moved here in 2017 from her previous final resting place in New York. On the day I visited, the doors did happen to be open, but I'm not sure what the hours are or if they're open every day. So if you're planning to visit, you might want to call the cemetery ahead of time. Mickey Rooney wasn't in The Wizard of Oz, but he and Judy Garland appeared in many movies together in the 1930s and 40s. And it's good to see them reunited here at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. His crypt just happens to be right next to Toto's memorial. Next, we'll visit the crypt of director Victor Fleming. Quite a number of directors actually worked on The Wizard of Oz, but he was the primary director. Like Judy Garland, Victor Fleming is also interred at the Abbey of the Psalms Mausoleum 
he's just right around the corner from her private pavilion. To find his crypt, you enter through the front doors and look for the hallway or corridor called the Sanctuary of Refuge. It's on the left-hand side. And his crypt is on the right-hand side, about halfway down the corridor. Fleming died at the young age of 59, just 10 years after The Wizard of Oz was released. From here, we'll head east to the opposite end of the cemetery. It's a pretty small cemetery. And if you like to walk, you can easily walk to the next three final resting places. All three are outdoors, and all three face the lake or pond that's right in front of the cathedral mausoleum. The first final resting place is really a memorial. It's a small statue in memory of Toto. One of the most popular dogs in movie history, Toto has a memorial cenotaph here. And you can read the story on the side of the memorial that explains where Toto, whose real name was Terry, is actually buried. From Toto's memorial, if you look north across the lake or pond, we'll find the gravesite of cinematographer Harold or Hal Rawson. In 1940, The Wizard of Oz was nominated for six Academy Awards, and one of those Oscar nominations was for Harold Rawson's cinematography. And he's also the younger brother of director Arthur Rawson and actor-director Richard Rawson, and the older brother of actress Helene Rawson. Rawson had quite a spectacular career in the movie business and was even married to Jean Harlow from 1933 to 1935. It's easy to find his grave. Just look for the bench with his name on it. In the same section, also overlooking the lake, and just a few rows east, are the grave sites of the costume designer who just went by his first name, Adrian, and his wife, actress Janet Gaynor. Adrian is credited with designing Dorothy's ruby slippers, which are probably the most famous shoes in movie history. So for that reason alone, he'll always be remembered. And what a beautiful thing to be remembered for. Next, I'm going to head to the Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California. It's located just a few miles from where The Wizard of Oz was filmed at MGM Studios which is now Sony Studios. Just inside the front gates, to the far left, is the grotto section where we'll find the final resting place of the Tin Man, played by actor Jack Haley. And just as an interesting bit of trivia, Jack Haley Jr., who is buried next to his father, was once married to Liza Minnelli, who's the daughter of Judy Garland. If you visit enough cemeteries, you really start to see a lot of interesting connections. Another interesting bit of trivia is that Jack Haley is buried just a couple of grave sites away from Bella Lugosi and Bing Crosby. I'm not sure if they were all friends in real life, but I'm guessing they probably were. I think this just seems like too much of a weird coincidence otherwise. Now these are definitely three people I never would have expected to find buried near one another. And I couldn't mention their graves without at least showing them to you. Jack Haley also has a star on Hollywood Boulevard not far from the star of actress Billy Burke, who played Glinda the Good Witch. From Jack Haley's grave, I'm going to drive down the hill back toward the entrance gates. But rather than exit, I'm going to make a left and I'm going to follow the street all the way up to the top of the hill where it reaches the mausoleum. The 
then right inside the front door to the left of the seating area is the crypt of actor Ray Bulger. He has one of the easier final resting places to find. I think it's really cool that Ray Bulger and Jack Haley are buried here just a few miles from the studio where they filmed The Wizard of Oz. Now because Bulger's crypt is located right in the chapel where they have funeral services and other services, I'm sure there are times when you can't get in to visit. So plan accordingly if you do plan to visit in person. This reminds me of Bob Hope's final resting place. The only way to get there, or to see it, is to go through a chapel. And if there's a service going on, you just have to wait until it's over. Which happened to me the day that I went to visit. I found over the years that it definitely helps to be patient and flexible when you're visiting famous final resting places. Ray Bulger's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame is near the corner of Hollywood and Highland and is just six stars away from Judy Garland's star. Actor Frank Morgan, who played the Wizard, also has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His star is located near the corner of Hollywood and Vine on Vine Street. His gravesite is located in the Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, New York. His gravesite photo was provided courtesy of Russ Dodd, the administrator and curator with findagrave.com. I haven't been able to get back to New York to visit the gravesite of actress Billy Burke, who played Glinda the Good Witch, so I wanted to visit her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's become something of a memorial over the years, and it's located across the street from Judy Garland's star and just a couple of blocks to the east. Burke is buried at the Kensico Cemetery in Valhalla, New York. Her grave photo has been provided courtesy of Neil Funkhauser. What really surprised me is not that Billy Burke has a star in Hollywood, but that Margaret Hamilton doesn't. When Margaret Hamilton died, she was cremated, and I believe her ashes were scattered and the whereabouts of her ashes are unknown. So I thought I would visit her star in Hollywood on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, only to discover that she's one of the very few cast members of The Wizard of Oz that doesn't have a star. How is that even possible? Margaret Hamilton's Wicked Witch of the West is arguably the most famous and most iconic character in movie history. So it's pretty hard to believe that she doesn't have a final resting place, a memorial, or even a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Burt Lahr does have a gravestone. He was also buried in New York, and I haven't had a chance to get back to visit his gravesite, but certainly hope to do that someday. But in the meantime, again, I thought I would visit his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, only to discover that he doesn't have a star either. So the Cowardly Lion and the Wicked Witch of the West are both starless. I don't know about you, but I think it's long overdue that both of them should have stars. While well, The Wizard of Oz movie is considered to be one of the greatest movies ever made, the song Over the Rainbow is considered by many, if not most, to be one of the greatest songs ever written. The music was written by Harold Arlen, and the lyrics were written by Edgar Yip Harburg. After his death, Harburg was cremated, and his ashes were scattered. 
so he has no final resting place to visit. Arlen does have a grave and a headstone in New York, but I wasn't able to get permission to use the photo to show you. So again, I decided to visit his Hollywood star instead, only to discover that he doesn't have one either. So I'd have to add Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg to my list of Wizard of Oz alumni who certainly deserve stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. If you'd like to visit Harold Arlen's grave, you can find him at the Ferncliff Cemetery and Mausoleum in Hartsdale, New York. And if I ever make it back to New York again, I'll certainly be visiting. I was very happy, though, to see that the Munchkins have a star. In 2013, they were honored with a star right next door to the Chinese Theater, which at the time was Grauman's Chinese Theater, which is where the 1939 Hollywood premiere of The Wizard of Oz took place. I read somewhere that Margaret Hamilton, for a time, lived at the Roosevelt Hotel, which you can see from the Munchkin Star, and it's also right across the street from the Chinese Theater. The Munchkins definitely got one of the best star locations in Hollywood. And speaking of Munchkins, my next stop is San Diego. Husband and wife, Johnny and Marie Moraldo, both played Munchkins on, in The Wizard of Oz and are now interred side by side at the Greenwood Memorial Park in San Diego, California. To find their crypts, I entered through the Rose Courtyard of the Cathedral Mausoleum and took the first left into the Sanctuary of Dawn. Their crypts are just to the right inside the doorway. Sadly, Marie died in 1979 and Johnny in 1983, so of course neither of them live long enough to see their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. From what I read, seven of the last surviving Munchkins were able to attend their star dedication, and I'm guessing it was their final reunion. Because today, about five years later, all of them have passed on. If I had known about the ceremony, I absolutely would have been there. If any of you were there, who are watching this today, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear about it. I'm sure it was a fun day. And finally, last but not least, I'm heading back up to Los Angeles to Forest Lawn, Hollywood Hills to visit the final resting place of actor Jerry Marin. He's located in the Court of Remembrance in the Sanctuary of Enduring Protection. He's laid to rest in the crypt just to the right side of Elizabeth Merengue, who was his wife. Merengue was Jerry Marin's real last name. He died on May 24, 2018, just a few weeks ago, so it may be a few months before his plaque appears on his crypt. He was the last known surviving cast member of The Wizard of Oz. Marin was one of the Lollipop Guild munchkins who welcomed Dorothy to Oz. Elizabeth wasn't one of the original munchkins in The Wizard of Oz, but she did years later appear in Under the Rainbow and The Dreamers of Oz. Marin was 98 when he passed away and in some ways his death marks the passing of an era. But the film itself is ageless and timeless and unlike us mere mortals, it's pretty likely to live on forever. And yes, that is actress Sandra Dee's final resting place just two crypts above Jerry Marin's. In Hollywood, you just never know who your forever after neighbors are going to be. 
so as always thanks for joining me today and now it's time for me to hit the yellow brick road home so i'll see you next time